Hello and welcome to another edition of The Front Page on GNAT TV. My name is Andrew McKeever, the Managing Editor of the Manchester Journal, and I'll be your host today. Many of you will remember a few months ago, starting in March, a series of three community forums were held around Manchester to look at the town and some of our strengths and weaknesses, challenges and opportunities. And after those three forums were held, a group of a set of four task forces were created to address those four issues that were identified by the three community forums. Those four task forces were the a biking task force to look at ways of improving the recreational biking opportunities and cycling opportunities around town, a river walk committee designed to improve the already existing river walk along the Batten Kill by the town green, a higher education task force, and a business incubator task force. It's our pleasure to have with us in the studio today two of the chairs of those last two task forces, the Higher Education Task Force and the Business Incubator Task Force. And uh, we'll be here talking with them today about what's been going on over the last few months. With us today is Jen Hyatt, who is the chair of the Higher Ed Education Task Force, John Conti of the Business Incubator Task Force. And Jen, let's start with you. Uh, bring us up to date. What's been going on with the Higher Education Group since last May? Well, in May, the group started getting together, and we're a very diverse committee of folk, um, all with varying opinions as to what the town needs in terms of higher ed or even continuing education. Um, we have a variety of programming and organizations that offer opportunities for people in the community, but there is a strong feeling during those community meetings that we don't have higher education or um, real program in Manchester like our neighboring cities do. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the first things we decided to do was to put together a survey to decide, help us decide what the town really is asking for. So uh, in the spring we worked on creating a survey. Um, we were thinking about launching it over the summer but then there was some concern that people would be away and we wouldn't get the kind of uh, qualitative, quantitative responses that we were looking for. So we just launched the survey um, shortly after Labor Day, and the responses have been coming in. And so our committee is meeting on Monday, the 21st, at 6 p.m. at BBA in the cafeteria to look at that data and to really try to ascertain what kind of programs are people calling for and what would be financially sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, so not only what people think the town needs, but what are people really going to pay for, um, what, what can be economically sustainable here. So. Um, a lot of people have a, a belief that if we build it, they will come, <laughs> a field of dreams kind of right. higher ed vision, and other people are saying, let's really see what people want. So we decided to attack that um, through the survey, and, and hopefully mm -hmm. we'll get some interesting results. All right. I should have mentioned that uh, when she's not being the chairwoman of the Higher Education Task Force, Jen is the academic dean at Burn Burton Academy. Mm -hmm. John, let's turn to you, who I also failed to introduce. He's the president of the Timbler Group, a marketing firm in Manchester, when he's not being the chair of the Business Incubator Group. So, John, uh, same question, I guess. What's been going on with uh, your group since last May? Uh, well, it's pretty much follows suit according to what Jen was just saying with her group. It's a very diverse group with a lot of different opinions. Um, and we're looking at a number of different areas from high tech to agriculture to some people have been interested in how we can build a facility or have a facility available that would start a manufacturing business. So it's so it's very diverse and we are been canvassing the, the community through surveys uh, that we are also meeting on Monday <laughs> at 5.30 to, uh, to go over. I think we may extend the survey of another week or two to mm -hmm. uh, try to get a little bit more input um, to try to narrow down a field of focus of where we want to go with this. In the meantime, we've had uh, some people on the committee have gone out to Burlington, Montpelier, and other places to look at existing co-working incubator type facilities. And, um, and others have looked at the area and to see what opportunities there are in real estate to see where we might be able to actually put something together. Mm. Well, I was wondering, would, the, would this incubator actually have an address, a physical location, or? Uh At the beginning of the uh, conversation back in May, June, when we started, uh, there was that uh, discussion of whether or not 
it needs to be in a physical space. And I think the vast majority of us do believe so. We'd like to actually keep it in the core of the town if we can. Mm -hmm. um, on the preliminary survey results that have been coming in, that's also the feeling of what people would be looking for. Uh, we just believe that is, there's an energy associated with being in town rather than being on the outskirts that uh, is important for new businesses to come together and develop. Mm -hmm. And I guess the same question, Jen, would, would, there, would a higher education entity or program require a physical location? Um, I mean, one sort of, the idea sort of summons up the image of a college campus mm -hmm, of some sort mm -hmm. or another, but uh, that may or may not be what you all had in mind. Right. There were a couple of people on the committee who had uh, a, a very ambitious vision of turning a place like the uh, empty Bromley Brook School into mm -hmm. a satellite campus in Manchester. I, I think our our committee is looking at something slightly less ambitious, at least to start. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we're trying to think about um, networking with the, the colleges and universities that are in our, our immediate neighborhood. Um, at BBA, we're able to do that um, a little bit more easily now because of the new flexible pathways legislation that just passed in the state. Um, which allows us to partner with some colleges and, and universities a, in the state who um, would work with us and, and accept our students. So under this new uh, dual enrollment program, students can take up to six credits or two college courses and um, do that before they go to college, before they leave, before mm. they graduate from high school, and that's absolutely free of cost to the student. So. Um, the timing of this is very interesting for me as part of the higher ed committee and also as academic dean at BBA because we're starting to, I'm starting to make connections with different institutions in the area um, and the opportunity potentially to open those classes up to people in the community um, is exciting. Um, but I don't think, to get back to your original question, I don't think we're going to be calling for, say, a Green Mountain College or a Bennington College or uh, a UVM to move in and, and set up base in, in Manchester, at least not initially. We're going to start mm -hmm. small and just try to bring some programs um, into the community where people see gaps. So, I mean, for example, there, were a lot of, there was a lot of concern about vocational programming in, in Manchester. There are some really great vocational centers already in Bennington and Rutland. Is that what Be Manchester needs? These are the kinds of questions that mm -hmm. we're wrestling with. What, where are the gaps? What can we bring to town that is not within driving distance? Okay. That makes sense. Um, would, would so you haven't really figured out yet whether or not this would be sort of a post-secondary school type of orientation or well, you know, community college that. kind of I thing? Well, we're still wrestling that. One or? of the other things that the committee's been trying to do and through the survey trying to do is to identify all of the programming that exists in our region. There is quite a bit when you start looking at the Tutorial Center and um, the lifelong Green Mountain Academy for Lifelong Learning, the mm -hmm. um, Career Development Center in Bennington. Um, you know, there's a lot that's going on in the town in terms of continuing ed, and now the, li the Vermont libraries are offering free online courses. So there are a lot of things we can tap into. Uh, it raises questions like maybe what we really need is a great advising system, a career advising system for people so that they know what the resources are in the area, or do we really need to have some more programs? Um, so that's what we're hoping to, to glean from the survey and mm. really try to nail down. Right now, there's a lot of big questions that the committee is wrestling with. It's, it's I'm jealous of, I was just <laughs> saying, I'm jealous of the river walk and biking committees because they're very <laughs> tangible things. Like, let's build the path. And, and our committee is a little bit more philosophical and mm. trying to figure out where we should go. Mm. Well, okay, so Jack, back over to you then. Uh, what would be the purpose of a business incubator? I mean, and, and kind of how do you see it emerging? It, it, you hear the term incubator, and I guess I, I think of like a, a building where there's a bunch of cubicles and, and people with uh, potentially great ideas sitting and, and trying to, you know, flesh them out in sort of a startup company kind of a mode. But is that kind of what you're really going towards, or well, is it something I different? I think it's a it's a uh, hybrid of an incubator and a co-working space, um, and we're trying to reach out to the Bennington to Rutland community for this uh, because of the possibility. Incubator traditionally has some resources, some money that's going to back some of the businesses, mm -hmm. and there may be a component there. We're looking into that. 
uh, but primarily it's a co-working space where people can uh, come in and take a, take a desk for a day or a half a day or, or maybe come in and do it for three or four days or full time, 24 hour access, there's different levels of where they can go. Private space, uh, shared conference room, uh, and shared office facilities, whether it be printing or kitchen area and the like. Um, so it's, in, in terms of, of industries or professionals uh, that can come in, it, it, I think it's very open. We're a small community. We can't specialize mm -hmm. in just one area like uh, larger communities can. And uh, I think it's good that uh, the different uh, um, the different areas can feed off each other and help each other. Mm -hmm. so. I was just wondering, would there be any any possibility of like a manufacturing component to this, where people would actually have like a workshop and they make things, or, or is it more just service uh, office space type of situation? That is to be determined. <laughs> uh, part of what we do realize is we can't uh, come up with the answer for everybody. Mm -hmm. And anything that has to do with manufacturing, uh, we're looking at agriculture and agricultural processing, food processing, kitchen, commercial kitchen space. Uh, those are very capital intensive and, and much more uh, space intensive also. So if we're trying to keep the, uh, the co-working space in the center of town, it makes manufacturing a little bit more difficult. We did have dreams and visions of the old Bowen Alley becoming the incubator space, oh, but right. we believe that's spoken for of something else. And also it's, you know, it, it's a major undertaking, whereas we're probably looking more for some empty office space, which uh, surprisingly is not easy to find in town. Mm. After all the talk of vacant stores and vacant There's spaces. There's lots right. of vacant <laughs> retail stores, right. but office space is different. Um, a couple of years ago, I remember, Jen, hearing a lot of talk about a satellite campus from that Marlboro College was going to operate, but I guess that idea didn't really ever develop into something. Uh, have, have you, do you think that that's one possible way you folks might go with that, or is that It's possible that we might end up making connections and, and trying to bring a satellite campus to, to Manchester. Uh, right now, I, I, it's really unknown at this point, mm. but we have a lot of... Um, Connections to local colleges, like I was saying, mm -hmm. um, the president of Marble, for example, is on our email list. So there are people, you know, people are paying attention to, mm -hmm. to what's happening with this committee. Um, and in my conversations, my ensuing conversations with some of these institutions, we could explore those kinds of ideas. Green Mountain College, for example, has a great satellite program at Killington. Mm -hmm. um, could something similar come to Manchester? Possibly. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I seem to recall back uh, in, in the community forums that were held between March and May, a lot of talk around the idea of uh, one of the more effective ways we could keep younger folks in town mm -hmm. was through a higher education program. And, and also, I'm sure you may w wish to comment on this as well, mm -hmm. John, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, the lack of a, a community college or a satellite campus mm -hmm. of another college or something that was attractive to uh, sure. folks in their late teens and early 20s was one of the reasons why there was this perception that a lot of folks tended to leave after mm -hmm. they graduated from high school. Is that a, a line of discussion your committee it is It absolutely on? is. I mean, I th one of the big things we've been talking about is trying to tap into some of the alumni of Burr and Burton in particular to see what would bring you back or what would have helped you made the decision to stay, make the decision to stay. So um, that's very much on our radar, this, this idea that people, the young people, the young professional people in particular are not staying in the area? How can we draw them back? Maybe higher ed is one way. Mm -hmm. Is that, that the line of conversation you folks have had too? It's certainly one of the driving forces. Um, one of the interesting models we're following is uh, uh, work co-work space that opened up in Montpelier several years ago where they opened it up and all these gaming programmers came out of the woods. Mm -hmm. They never knew we were there and now it's, <coughs> it's, a, it's a little center for that. Mm. Um, and is, is definitely a youth-oriented uh, industry that they're mm -hmm. in. Um, so that, that is one of the driving forces. Uh, I would say the other the town of Manchester has a um, program called You Can VT that they came out with a mm -hmm. year or two ago to try to bring businesses to the town of Manchester 
um, from professionals to small business to say, come bring your business here, live here, that's the lifestyle, that's why we're all here. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's another group that this is trying to attract. Well, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing the organization of a business incubator? I mean, is it getting enough money together to, so, to open up a, a facility or a building and, and fund programs and whatnot? Or, or is there another you know, kind of roadblock that's looming larger? Um, I don't believe that is as much as getting a good feel that there's, there's need. And I think if the need is there, I, I believe, you know, we don't want to just build it and hopefully they will come. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, and we're trying to find something, I think scalability is very important. If we try to start too big of a space, then the financing is going to become an issue. Right. But if we can start small and grow with it as the needs grow, uh, that would be the, the perfect scenario. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll throw the same mm -hmm. question to you, Jen. Is has there been one major roadblock that's kind of you know bulk large in your thinking, or is it just a lot of different, relatively small kind of questions? Yeah, I would say the largest roadblock is the big question <laughs> of what and mm -hmm. why and and when and where. I mean, we we really people are all of varying opinions about what Manchester really needs, even within our own committee. <laughs> so the, the trick is really, again, that's why we, we started with the survey. We're hoping we can, we can focus some of our attention to what people are, are saying that they would actually not only support in a philosophical sense, but in a financial sense, what makes sense for Manchester, what's going to bring people, what's going to keep people. Um, so the big, the big roadblock is it's the unknown <laughs> factor. It's not really it down, a huh? necessarily a financial one to start with. It's really just trying to identify what makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of interesting mm -hmm. in a way because, uh, I mean, I think there seems to be a general consensus that the local schools around here are quite good mm -hmm. and uh, seem to perform pretty well. Mm -hmm. So what then is kind of left to do after right. kids graduate from high school or secondary school? Right. That All these great... Here well-educated kids leave. So it gets mm -hmm. back to your, your other point about, um, or if they return, um, where are the jobs for them? So I think our, our committees have a lot in common in terms of trying to identify what would serve the people of Manchester in a way that's both um, fulfilling and, and meets people's quality of life, but also provides them with, a, with career opportunities. There, there's been several <coughs> crossovers between our mm -hmm. two groups. I've had uh, a number of people uh, contact me and discuss about teaching entrepreneurship mm. um, and, and mm -hmm. trying to see if, these, if our two uh, end goals could be met together in some way. Right. Uh, and, and do the, you know, are, are the needs that the businesses or the, the people who, who do have professional careers here in town, do they match what, what mm -hmm. might be the end result of our, our committee? Are there ways we could work together to, to provide the town with something that works you know, on, on both these angles? So it's a little, again, it's very nebulous. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very philosophical challenge. Um, uh, the Vermont Council on Rural Development was one of the organizations that uh, helped get the community visits and the community forums off the ground, and, and that was basically a, a flood the zone approach with bringing in a lot of state experts and folks who were mm -hmm. very knowledgeable about a variety of fields. I guess I was just wondering, have they been a source of help or information for both of your groups in the after, uh, aftermath of the uh, community visit, or did they kind of come in and do their job? talk about all the various possibilities with you and then move on to the next community yeah, visit? I'd say it's more the latter. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, they came in, they, they started the process. Um, I believe they're there as resources if we mm -hmm. need them, which I believe we will be mm -hmm. <laughs> at mm -hmm. some point very soon. Um, I guess I was just wondering if there was any precedent or any, any past experience they might have had with either a business incubator or trying to come up with a higher education program that would fit the community that, you know, they might have been able to kind of say, well, five years ago, such and such a town did the same sort of thing and this is what happened. But If that's the case, I haven't been privy to that yeah, information. No, I just don't think so. just <laughs> the few uh, incubator co-working spaces I know mm -hmm. of around the state. There is one town 
in northern Vermont, and I, uh, the name's escaping me at the moment, but they've been a model for the agricultural uh, incubator system, mm -hmm. and it, it, it took them seven, eight, nine years to come about, but their whole town is now very much behind this. Uh, it's a major facility that's there, uh, and it's really um, brought the town back to life, what I understand. Mm -hmm. If I'm speaking kind of general, because I can't remember the name, but <laughs> I believe it's over in the Connecticut Valley area. Okay. Um, I guess I just wonder, I, you, you've been conducting the surveys now for a few weeks at mm -hmm. least, maybe longer than that, and, and while we don't have all the final results yet, um, I guess I'm just wondering if you give us a sneak preview on kind of what are some of the inputs that you've been getting from folks who have responded to the survey so far. Um, are there any ideas that have popped up that you know struck either of your committees as being, oh wow, why didn't we think of that kind of thing, or or some kind of you know confirmation of where you were already going? And I guess, Jen, I'll uh, uh, throw to you first. I, we have I, in looking at the survey <coughs> results, and I'm really going to crunch the numbers tomorrow. I've, I've asked the the deadline is is Monday, which is the day we're meeting with our committee. So I haven't I've been holding off on really doing an analysis of the data, which I'm going I'm planning on doing with our fine math department chair <laughs> tomorrow who's really great at crunching numbers. Um, I haven't seen any superficially looking at the data. Res um, we have about 150 responses so far from people in the community. I haven't seen anything that's a big surprise. I've seen a lot of um, response for business and vocational training, which is again a crossover, points to a crossover or collaboration with John's mm. committee. Um, but I don't. I can't. I can't give you enough specifics until I crunch that number. And um, we keep all of our uh, committee minutes and all of the things that we're doing on a wiki space. It's called Manchester 2020 Higher Ed. Wikispace. Com. Wikispaces. Com. And on that sp that site, I post all of our minutes, and I will post the results of our survey. Mm -hmm. If anyone's really interested in taking a look, they can go to that site and and check it out. So next week, that will all be up. I was just wondering, uh, in case anyone's watching and, and would like to go to one of your meetings, I mean, mm -hmm. would that be possible? Absolutely. Or is it just it's sort of members only? In terms of our committee, mm -hmm. we, we welcome anyone who's interested and wants to take part. So our next meeting is October 21st at 6 p.m. in the BBA cafeteria. Anybody's okay. welcome to attend. All right. Yeah. So, uh, same question then, John, uh, over to you. Uh, your, your survey results so far, anything kind of leaping off the page at you? Um, I believe it's confirming our, our direction that we think we're going to be going in. Uh, the vast majority of people so far have been looking for a co-working space rather than a manufacturing or mm -hmm. uh, agriculture facility, uh, privacy, quiet, a quiet place to, to work. Uh, 80% of the respondents work out of their basement and garage, mm. uh, and, and they want to um, s feel the fuel, the energy of working amongst other people. Um, I would say, other than that, uh, nothing yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're as I said, we we have the survey going. Where you can go to it. Uh, all our events, all our information is online also at mm -hmm. incubate, incubator2020.wordpress.com. And, and everyone's welcome to our meetings. Our next one is Monday night also at 5.30 mm -hmm. at Joy, the new retail star, uh, shop oh, okay. in town. Okay, right, Main Street, uh, yeah. We, we try, we've been having our meetings in couple, several different businesses around town, and, uh, and it's, it's kind of nice to to have it in, the, in that atmosphere. When do you both anticipate having the survey results kind of hashed over and you know figured out and some kind of you know sense made out of them? Is that like a, a month or so down the road? No, for us, it's th we're we're getting into it this week, so this mm -hmm. coming week. So we should have. I don't anticipate we're going to have a lot more results than we already have. So it's mm -hmm. time to just look mm -hmm. at the data and start making some decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, 150 responses sounds pretty good. It's pretty good, yeah. I, would say I was hoping for more, <laughs> but <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> um, so in terms of next steps then, basically you're going to take that data, mm -hmm. kind of look it over, and then try and figure out where to go from here. Is that exactly. John? I, I believe our yeah. next step is going to be to look at that and then start talking to some mm -hmm. landowners, some pro uh, landlords, yeah. and see what is available, who can work with us um, a little bit. Uh, no one's looking for anybody to 
donate space or mm -hmm. anything like that, but but you know there are certain things that could be done at the beginning of the mm -hmm. process to help things along. Mm -hmm. It seems like there would be a lot of folks who are probably working out of a, a home office or a, a home uh, basement or someplace that uh, you know to, to sort of you know uh, take that next step to the next pro professional level mm -hmm. would uh, would benefit greatly from from the it idea would, of, and of that. And, and to have a place to meet with clients or meet with, uh, I had one person say that they could just meet in a professional place to interview people, mm. you know, and to have that facility for that. So they're, we're going to try to make it as flexible as possible. All right. Well, uh, great to have both of you here with us today. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to come down and fill us in and what's been going on behind the scenes there since last, end, end of May, May, I think, was mm -hmm. the last community forum. And uh, we'll certainly stay tuned to see what, comes out of it. I think both of those are clearly interesting programs and we've talked about them I think a lot over the past few years so it's good to see that there's something happening on that. Well, thanks for okay. having us. Well thank you. <laughs> and thank all of you for watching today. This has been uh, the front page on GNAT TV. My name is Andrew McKeever. Pleasure having you with us today. We'll see you next time.